Now, racism in football was back in the spotlight today, this time because of allegations contained in a new book suggesting the former England manager, Graham Taylor, was approached by members of the FA to talk about capping the number of black players in his team. He's denied categorically that it's true, but the story has raised concerns once again about tolerance on the pitch. Well, we're joined now from our central London studio by the former professional footballer Mickey Ambrose, who has played for Chelsea, Charlton Athletic, and former footballer Michael Jarman, who used to be on the team at clubs including Watford, Reading, and Luton Town. Gentlemen, a very good evening to both of you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to start actually by reading what Graham Taylor had to say because he's been really very strong in his, in his rejection of these allegations. So let's give him the, the first say on this story. He said today, certainly never during my time at the Football Association, I had no FA people coming up to me and telling me which team to pick and to pick fewer black players. I would have remembered that. The problem, Mickey Ambrose, is I suppose that for some people, and we're talking about a time, you know, some years ago, yeah. this just rings true for them. What, what's your feeling? Yeah, I mean, it does ring true, I, I suppose, in some aspects. But first of all, I know Graham Taylor to be a very uh, man of integrity. Um, he's, the comments you've just read out um, conflict to uh, an initial comments that were made in a broadsheet. In a, in a broad um, but, you know, he stated uh, quite clearly this never happened. Um, I mean, I was involved in football in the 80s. Obviously, it was terrible then. The 70s was terrible even then. Um, it is disappointing to hear that. I mean, there's no reflection now on the FA now. It was back then. Um, obviously, a book's been brought out. Um, why it's come out now, I, who knows? But uh, um, for me personally, yes, you know, th th there is discrimination in not just football, but in walks of life. And, um, uh, you know, we only have, what, three or four black managers out of 92 clubs. You know, Jimmy Floyd has been just taken Burton up and Chris Powell at Huddersfield. So, in, in answer to your question, I just think there's... I, I can't say I wasn't there, but the, the, something was said because um, it's been written in a book and, yeah. and this former Burman City player has said he met Graham and these were these words were said. Yeah, Michael Chalmers, Mickey mentions that former Birmingham City player. Let's just... I'm going to bring our viewers the quote. Uh, that is mm. appearing in the book, and this is on really the whole thing hinges on this. Rather, he says, um, Graham Taylor came up to me and said, "Look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm never going to admit it. I'll be sued for libel." And they went on to say, "When I was manager of England, I was called in by two members of the FA, who I won't name. This is Graham Taylor. I volunteered two names. He said, "I'm not prepared to say, but I was told in no uncertain terms not to pick too many black players for the national side." Uh, Michael Jarman, same question to you, really. I mean, he's denied that this, this conversation happened, but does it have a ring of truth to you? Well, I think he's remembered the quote very, very well, and I don't know if he had a dictaphone on at the time and was recording him. Um, look, can someone remember what was said a decade, two decades ago? Um, is the book serving someone else's agenda? I don't know. Uh, I do know Graham Taylor to be a man of integrity. Would it surprise me if, you know, 20 years ago the FA were discriminate, uh, discriminating against uh, black football players or preventing them uh, to, uh, from, from being promoted effectively to the national team to, to serve their own agenda? I don't know. It, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it happened, but then I'd like to say and think that the game has progressed from there. All I know is Graham Taylor took over a 1990 World Cup squad. Uh, and and have... he appointed Paul Ince as, its first, as first England black captain. True, yeah. Exactly, and, and the squad was maintained. There were, there were four players that were black at the time in the 1990 World Cup and in the 92, uh, Euro 92, the same thing was maintained. There wasn't a progression fine, there wasn't more black players added to the squad, but there certainly wasn't any removal of black, black, black players. And like you said, he gave professional debuts or international caps to black players. So I wouldn't like to sit here and quote and say something that I just simply haven't got the inside line on and whether Graham Taylor has been set up or whether he actually has said this, gone on record, and there was something more sinister being happening uh, behind the the scenes at the FA. I, I suppose one thing we can say with conviction, uh, Mickey Ambrose, is that, you know, we, we look at boardrooms, we look at representation on boardrooms in management positions, and, we, you know, we can lament the fact there are too few black faces there. But on the pitch, you know, it's merit-based, isn't it, you, you would assume, and that people, fans, fans who watch the game closely, understand the game closely, they'll know if a player who should be in the team isn't. Of course, of course. I mean, a lot of scouts are cab drivers. They know more about <laughs> football than anybody else. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, 15 players, I think, Graham, black players Graham brought through. I mean, you've got to remember, Luther Blissett, John Barnes, when he was at Watford. I mean, what a team they had there. Um, but, yeah, coming back to the boardroom, I mean, that's a bone of contention with me because, um, you know, I go to the PFA awards and various functions and uh, it'd be nice to um, 
for example, the Premier League. I mean, we can go on Premier League, the FA website, and find out, you know, uh, how, how many ethnic minority people work there in in not just mid, uh, say middle management, but in senior management. You, you know, Helen Herrera Batts is the first female uh, uh, non-executive director of the FA. So, you know, what black players have contributed to this to football is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But we want to see it replicated in in with managers, coaches, and as you say, in the boardroom. You know, you couldn't count on, on one hand. How many ethnic minority people were involved, or well, black players were involved in the boardroom? I Michael, think it's crazy. Yeah, uh, Michael Jarman. Some people thought it was crazy that Saul Campbell never captained England, but I mean, mm. it's so subjective, isn't it? That's the problem here. I, no, I see. I, I think the game has progressed on uh, for, from from a grassroots level. Um, I'm a stats man because I work in the finance game now, and you know, yeah, the, the, a quarter of the, the, the footballing league, uh, that's from the Premier League right down to League Two, is represented now by communities or, or football players who are from BME communities. That's a good stat. That's a good reading. The game has progressed from a senior management le level. We have a whole a, a, a different issue. Uh, Graham Taylor has come out there, the chairman of the PFA, uh, who came out and, and voiced his concerns that there may be some form of subconscious um, uh, racism that maybe does take place and we don't even realise it's happening. And you've got to ask yourself, why, did, why does out of 92 footballing clubs, only four are represented from a BME community, uh, which makes up about 5% of, of, of the managers in the league? Where, why is there such a fallout when players come to the end of their career to then actually... Is, is, is there something that's happening from an institutional aspect or is it simply black football players are turning around and saying to themselves well, maybe there isn't a career in this for me, I'll have to turn and look elsewhere. Yeah. That's something that needs to be addressed and solved, I think, pretty soon. I suppose but it's good that we're having the debate. Yeah. Well, I suppose the problem is, Mikhail Bros, when, when you start looking at solutions and antidotes to the problem, you get into ideas like uh, affirmative action, positive discrimination, uh, and they, some people say, you know, laudable, that's what's needed, at least in the short term. But there are always people who feel injured, don't they? They feel that somebody's got a job ahead of them which they didn't deserve, but they got it because of, of reasons of political correctness. That's how some people see it. Yes, yeah, and that's how uh, I was just chatting to, 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 to the guy we were just chatting to there, and uh, it's something that, you know, you don't want to be given a job because you're black, white, Scottish, Irish, you know, you wouldn't be given a job because you, you've got the skills to, to, to deliver. You know, uh, we see Les Ferdinand now, uh, uh, Operation Football Director at QPR, and Chris Ramsey, uh, one of the, uh, from, from, from the youth, from, from Tottenham, you know, he's, he's now the manager of, of, of QPR. So, we, you know, um, as an ethnic minority person myself, I, if I go for, to apply for a job, uh, and I'll tell you now, I've, I've, I've sent a CV to, to the Premier League, I didn't get a reply, and that's the truth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so whether it got lost in the post, I don't know. Uh, I, but, you know, I, it's, it's the truth, I mean, I'll be very honest with you here, uh, because we, we go over this question all the time, uh, and John Barnes put it quite nicely, passive discrimination in all walks of life, when, I don't know, because like, he's this, because he's that, or she's that, or that, you know, you, you won't get the job. So I, I think people in authority, the, 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 the FA, the PFA, you know, and Gordon Taylor does a great job of the PFA, and there's a, mm. a, a wide remit of, of ethnic minority people involved in the FA, in the PFA. So we want to see more, uh, more, more transparency, I think, is the word, but how we go about it, I think, get Richard Scudimore on your show, get Greg Dyke on your show, and get Gordon Taylor on your show, and let's have a debate, a big mm. one. You need, to, you need to find the solution. That's where the majority of the issue lies. It's all well and good talking about the problem. The yeah, problem has exactly. been discussed yeah. for, for yeah. two decades. You need affirmative action now okay. and to actually progress the matter further. Okay, okay. Michael Jarman, Mickey Ambrose, gentlemen, Th thanks both thank very you. much indeed for your time tonight. Cheers, no problem. Thank you. Very much.